today I thought it was a magnificent performance from Bill. Um, it, looked, it, it was like a continuation of the Lemieux fight. Um, boxing, I mean, he's got a great boxing brain, he's got great footwork, great reflexes, um, fast hands. You look at it, no wonder no one wants to fight him. And they don't want to find him. He's finding it very difficult to do it. It's a step up away weight to do what he's done, having been out there. I, mean, I forget forget about the fight at Christmas. He took that, what, two weeks' notice? A week. A week no. notice, and he was well overweight. Um, but he just wanted to do something before Christmas, set himself up for um, this big fight. Um, it's, was it nearly 17 months since the new fight? 14 months. No, more than that. Is it? No, it's December. Yeah, yeah so it's, uh, yes. 18 months or whatever it is. So it's a long, long time out of the ring, you know, a lot of disappointment last year. And to move up a weight as well, not getting a fight, you know, to go straight into that. Against a guy that I know a lot of people saying, oh, that's going to be a walkover. But the way he boxes, it, you know, he can make it look like a walkover. walkover. But I knew that fellow was going to be tough. I knew he was a big, strong man coming down from cruiserweight. Obviously, coming down to a, the weight, he was a much bigger, he was a, physically a bigger man than Bill, but Bill done extremely well, you know, the art of boxing, hitting and not being hit, although he did get clipped in the, in the fight, he got, uh, which happens in boxing, but that tells you, um, you know, again, that he's boxing brain to how he got through that. And it's just, uh, you know, to, to become, was it the 12th Brit now to um, be a two-weight world champion, he's joined that exclusive club, that's a bit of a thing. And uh, now it's onwards and upwards. We're getting busy this year. He wants another two fights this year, which we're going to work on. And I'm going to try as hard as I can to ensure that one of those is a, is a big hit one or even both of them a big fight. Bill, congratulations. It's like you've never been away, hasn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, <coughs> first of all, I've, I've already thanked everyone. Just got to obviously thank Frank Warren and his team because, you know, um, you know, people give me a lot of stick. You know, say, oh yeah, you're you're this, you're that. You know, you should go here and this and that, that team. But I'm world champion, two weight world champion. So one thing with Frank Warren, what he says, he delivers. And uh, I've been with him since day one. I'd like to finish my career with him. I already said that to him. So a big thank you to his team, and uh, and to MTK. You know, um, and obviously Ben. I, I just felt um, I felt a little bit ring rust in there myself, to be honest with you. I um, I felt a little bit sluggish. Um, you know, I was just saying to Ben, funny enough, in the changing rooms, I felt a little bit, I don't know, I felt a little bit overheated, like, I don't know if it was a small fit, I don't know what it was, and I just felt a little bit overheated, but when I got out there, a bit of, on the outside, I freshened myself up, I, uh, I just feel that, you know, I know when I'm on, when I'm on my day, there is, there's not, I believe, not super middleweight or middleweight that can beat me on my day, as long as I'm 100%, um, you know, I've signed the contract for Glofkin twice, I've chased all them at middleweight, I've had to move to super middleweight, not because I can't make middleweight, because there's just no one wants it at middleweight. So, you know, hopefully the big fights can come at uh, super middleweight now. I'll leave that to, uh, to my team to sort out. And uh, I just want to stay busy this year. Like Frank said, I want to be out three times this year and uh, keep the ball rolling now. I'm not getting any younger, I'm 29 and I feel that I'm just coming into my prime. And, and that's fair for my best, that's 16 months out. You know, I shake a little bit of ring rust off there, and off, you know, I, I just felt a little bit, a little bit of rust there. But you know, that's brushed off, and I want to move straight into the second one now to get the ball rolling to uh, to move on from that performance. Do you think that you need another fight for maybe one of those big names? Or? No, no I, I generally believe now that I'm, I'm this sort of fight. Once I get that bit of ring rust out, you know, get the swing of things, I'm I'm willing to go. I'm ready to go. Um, you know, I'll be in the gym again, I'll have a week off and start my training back up. So I'll be willing to go and, and get back into camp for a big fight because, you know, I'm, I'm not inexperienced, I'm very experienced. So I just feel that that ring rust has blew off. I, I had the uh, same thing when I boxed Willie Monroe. I had two back-to-back -back mandries, beat Millie, uh, Willie Monroe, an awkward self-ball, then moved straight into the performance of David Lemieux. So I'm, I'm, I'm better when I'm active. If you could quickly on next opponents, who would it be then? I would love to fight Canelo. You know, that's the fight I would love. You know, he's he's a uh, super middleweight world champion, but you know, I don't I don't like all this uh, weight clauses they put on opponents, and I think it's very dangerous for one. And uh, I think it's a form of, of cheating in a way because you know, if you're putting a, a restriction on a fighter to get in the ring and weighing at five o'clock when there's no need to, I just think that's you know, obviously he's doing it because it's in his favour and you don't blame him. But 
I wouldn't really like to, to be doing them sort of clauses in contracts, but I'd love to have a one six eight fight with Canelo. Eubanks still on the radar? You know, Listen, Eubanks can be on the radar, but on my terms. You know, I remember when I had it, when I was going for a bad patch, you know, and people mentioned my name, you say, oh, you know, he's, he's got to wait, he's got to do this, he's got to do that. Well, I'm super middleweight world champion now. So, you know, I'll, if he wants to fight, I'll fight him next. Frank can get on the phone in the morning and make the fight, no problem. And, uh, but it's got to be, you know, on my terms, not stupid terms. Frank can tell you how, how hard they are to deal with. You know, I think we signed, what did we sign, twice? Lawyer, yeah, I think it was done, wasn't it, for lawyers, lawyers. Yeah. And it just cost a load of money, right? It cost Frank a load of money getting it done. It. Time and camps and, you know, so if he wants to fight, listen, I'm fit, I'm willing to get back in camp and make the big fight, but it's just hard work to make them fights. And at the end of the day, you think when he, he looks at his record, it's got on now, Billy Joe Saunders' loss, you think he'd want to try and get that, try and reverse that? He has no intention. And I used to think it's the old man I also think it's him now, the kid. Well, he's not a kid, is he? Was he 29, 30? Yeah. You know, so if they want it, there's not, it's no problem at all making that. It's a pay-per-view fight, and uh, both fighters will make a lot of money, no doubt about that. And it would be a, it, you know, that would be a big, big fight. But my, my, uh, my dealings with my thing is get, you've got more chance of, uh, of, um, well, I think was more chance of Canelo fighting you at the moment. They just don't want to know, they don't want to know. You only got to look at Bill's style, and he's got a great style. Look at Lemieux. He spent 12, 12 rounds of punching out. That's what he did, and, you know, he, and, he, and he's now featuring on big shows again in the States <coughs> with, uh, uh, with, with um, Golden Boy, isn't he? Yeah. So they don't want to know, and uh, Bill's, I don't know what it is, you would think that the fact he's, he held the the, uh, the middleweight belt, now he's holding this one, you'd think they'd be queuing up to unify it. How would you rate the other champions of the middleweight belt? Yeah, I think, obviously, look, I think any world champion you have to give respect. Um, you know, at this level, it showed tonight, at this level, you have to give everybody respect because it can all change in a, you know, a flick of an eyelid. So you have to give everybody res respect at this level, especially world champions, because you know people don't realise what it takes to be world champion. There's only you know there's there's a small population, you know, of boxers what be actually become world champions. So you have to take it out to them people and, and respect them. So I respect all the champions. I respect them all, but um, I'm willing to fight them all as well. You know, I'm, I know that I'm not out of my depth with any super middleweight in the planet or any middleweight. So, you know, the option is still there, like I say, the option is still there at middleweight as well. I moved up to super middle because I couldn't get the big fights. Just couldn't get them, nobody's fault. Just, you know, we saw them, we're ready, and just couldn't get them, they couldn't get them across the line. So, you know, hopefully now, that super middleweight opens new doors. And, uh, you know, I've still, got, I've still got a couple of things, really, that I, I'd like to put right in my, in my boxing, you know, to add, add to my boxing. So, um, like I said, obviously, teaming up with Ben now, I feel we can bring that out. You know, everyone can see that my fitness is there, the, you know, the, the skills are there and, you know, I'm, I'm just, I just want the big fights because uh, it gets a bit frustrating when you're, when you're at this level and you know how good you are but you can't, you know, be let loose, you know, in that sort of um, era of them good fighters and see how actually good you are. Why do you think you, you haven't got those big fights? I just think that who needs a slick southpaw don't really get hit a lot. Who's a good, you know, who's a very good mover, you know, he, he can box, he can fight. He's sort of one of them, really. All right, he's world champion, but we're really putting our, our title against the line against him. Probably they're looking and thinking he's not a big draw. So I mean, one of them, I have to put myself in a position now, which I feel that we're done with this move to become super middleweight world champion. That fighters now have to look and say, well, you know, he's world champion. That's what we. If we want to be world champion, let's, let's take a chance. And you know, with the back in a BT now, we can bring them big fights here. Bill, you've achieved so much with inactivity and your injury, things like that. What do you, are there things that you know that you have to achieve to, to fulfil the, the potential that we were showing you from so early on? I just, I just feel that, you, you know, I feel that I can I, sometimes, in, well, in, in the past, I took my half the ball, you know, and, and when you take your half the ball in boxing, it's, it's one of those. You take your half the, off the uh, opponent in the ring, you get knocked out. You take your half the ball outside the ring, and, you know, you can't get them big fights. You can't get up for them, and, you know, so you've got to make sure now to stay. Well, what I've learned 
it, from 2018 and in the past now, moving on to, to, to 29, coming up 30, I need to stay active and need to stay in the gym because I'm not getting any younger. And uh, I need to be more active now to get the best out of me in my 30s. But, you know, on the other side of it, I mean, yeah, it's not like it's not a success story. He's booked for our country in the Olympics. British, Commonwealth, European, world champion. Uh, two time, two weight. Two, yeah, two weight world champion. So it's a bit of a success story. You know, his fights, have all, all of his big fights have all been shown on TV. All his big fights have been shown, uh, most of them have been live on TV back to the States. So, you know, he's, get, he's got the exposure, the exposure is there. Um, and it's just that the couple of guys there who do have belts who are big names there. It's a bit like, um, it's the same situation I was in with Joe Kawasaki, where I couldn't get, I was, we tried for ages to get him a big fight. We just couldn't get one done. I mean, we had a deal done, Don King and I, for Joe Kawasaki to fight Bernard Hopkins. Agreed the terms on the telephone with Bernard was on the phone, King was on it, Show, Jay Larkin at the time from Showtime was on the call. Agreed the terms, the next day, <coughs> Bernard said he wanted double the amount of money, which meant he didn't want the fight. So that's where he's at. But it's our job now to make sure one of these big, big fights happens. He's done everything over here. He's beat everybody over here. You know, everybody, anybody that who wants to step in the ring to him. And you look at his record and think, how many undefeated fighters did you fight on the spin? There's about six yeah. undefeated fighters on the trot and beat them all. And a couple of good fighters there. Well, a few good fighters there. So he's, you know, that's why I've got. So, I've always had the faith in him. I, you know, I like the boxing. I like. And I like what I see in Bill. And Bill, when when uh, he's on form and when he gets the bit between his teeth and he knuckles down, I don't think there's anybody out there can beat him. I want to see him fulfil his potential and not piddle it away. I want to see him make sure that he can... I think he has the, the, the potential over the next couple, couple of years to be the British fighter of his generation if, he gets the, if we can get him and manoeuvre him into the right big fights. There's a great big fight to be made in this country with Callum Smith. It's a fantastic fight to make. What a great unification that would be. That would sell out anywhere. You said on the phone to us the other day, I think you might be a bit of a joke, you'd ring Callum tomorrow morning to get that fight made. What would you think that performance and that, and that win would have affected the, the negotiations? I don't think, listen, I, I know Callum's a, a good fighter. And um, like I say, I know he's not one of these that bottle out of a fight, I know he would step up and have the fight. You know, I know that he's not one of those who thinks about stuff, he will put it on the line. So that's one thing I can say about Smith, and he's a good fighter, probably one of the best at the weight. The and, uh, at the you know, I would love to, um, I would love to put myself against him to see how good I am. So he's, a, he's obviously a good fighter, and I think that uh, that fight can be made. I know he's fighting in June, so I want to be out around, um, you know, just after, you know, around after that, you know, a few weeks after, so I don't know if that can match up. Uh, straight away because I want to be free, out three times, but maybe at the end of the year that can happen. Given he's on the other side of the road, Frank, is that? that Sorry? Realistic? Given he's on the other side of the road. Listen, we, 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 that's never been a problem with us. If the, if, the, if the terms are right, we have no problem in, in, in going to the other side of the road, and they should have no problem coming to our side of the road with what we, we're prepared to offer. Whatever the, wherever the best deal is, let it happen. It's a fight, you know, if you've got confidence in your man, he'll come back out. If he has to go the other side of the road, he'll come back here afterwards. You know, Bill went out to fight Lemieux in his own backyard, went out to do that. He was, go he was going out to fight Andrade in, his own, in, in the other guy's backyard on the other side of the road. So that's nothing anybody can accuse him of or us of. We never stand in the way of that happening. For, for, for me, it's all about whether they fancy it. I spoke to Joe Gallagher and he told me that um, Callum's next couple of fights are all panned out for him or planned for him and I said to him well let's make this one this is a bigger fight than all of them and he said well let's, we, let's do it next year let's get it right Callum's never going to be a super middleweight this time next year he's going to be a light heavyweight when would you think he's being out next week? sorry when would you like him out next like to get him out. Um, well, we're just going to talk about it afterwards. So. Getting out tomorrow in the pub and have a fight there. <laughs> well, tonight? Even. Yeah, tonight. Me and Frank get out there. How soon would be Not feasible? feasible? Sorry? How soon would be feasible? Uh, well, I think, you know, we've got to be sensible probably in the next three months. That's what it'll be. That's what we want to do. Ben, ben, remember, Ben's got to work it out logistically because Ben's obviously out there with Tyson. So we've got to work out the logistics of it.
but do you think that counts for Mick Foyt would kind of give you then the recognition you feel you deserve? Big See, like that. The, the thing is with me is that I rise to the occasion. So my performance will give me what I need to deserve. And um, I think tonight it was like I say, six, six and a half out of ten, seven out of ten. Um, but that sort of fight there, if, I, you know, if that fight can be made and I can come out as a winner there, I think people's got to say, well, look, you know, he's the best super middleweight. I think Callum's looked at as the best super middleweight or one of the best. But I'm world champion now and... You know, I'm willing to make a unification fight with any super middleweight. Any. He's done what Joe Kawasaki did, middleweight to super middleweight. That's what he's done. He's moving. It's exactly the same scenario, same as Nigel Benn did. It's exactly the same thing. But, and you can say it's the same as Chris Eubanks, but Chris Eubanks never fought a top class American, never fought a big American name. He's been in and done that. He's travelled and, he, you know, and he has no problem in, in doing that. You know, we, 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 we will make these fights happen. They will happen. Joe's obviously gone down as maybe the best ever for Britain. Do you think that Bill's got the fact now? I, I think, like that, but I, you know, I was, I, I, always, I remember when Bill, I remember sitting down in Cardiff and there was just a few journalists down there, and I mean, it was in sort of late 90s, and I said, this guy's going to be the British fighter of the, of the new millennium. I said, he will be the guy, stand on me. And that's how it, how it turned out to be. And I think, as I say with Bill, Bill, Bill's problem has been his discipline. It's as simple as, simple as that. It's all about discipline, but, you know, and we, we've had talks in the past, but we all know now where we're at. We all know what he's, he knows better than I know what he's going to do. He's got a trainer who don't stand for no nonsense whatsoever. He's in a camp that's got, it's, it's become like a renaissance as far as guys who never looked after their bodies in between fights. You look at Tyson and so on. They look like fighters now, they're like athletes. I mean, Tyson looks like an athlete, doesn't he? He's an I'm just going to sort myself out now. I know, I was going to say that, I was going to mention. But they look, they, they're, they're athletes, and, and, and you know, Bill's not stupid, he knows where it is, and, he, and, he, and I like to think he's seen Tyson and where he's got to in the last few months. And, uh, you know, who's an undefeated fighter, by the way, who beat, who went and beat Klitschko. But now, now, look at them now, they're, they're, they're different class. We know they're great fighters, but the discipline and, and being athletes takes him into a new dimension and that's where Bill's got to be so we're going to keep him busy and make sure that uh, I think I think he has all the all the capabilities of emulating what Joe did. I'm not saying he's going to have as many defences now because well, what you had now, how many defences you had in your time? I think I had about three or four the yeah. other one. So you know he's, he's behind on that as far as Joe was concerned but he can certainly go and fight the best that's around there and, and beat them like Joe did. You, know, you started your career just down the road at Huddersfield and Chesham. I mean, what do you say to all those young aspiring boxers when they see what you've achieved? Here yeah, I started. <coughs> How did it mean for you to fight here on home soil as well? I started in Chesham. Uh, and you know, he was there alongside of me there. I remember punching him up. And uh, <laughs> True, I like listen, I, I, I just like to say, look, first of all, obviously, I've got to thank the fans. There was a good crowd there tonight. Um, you know, if I if if someone, you know, I'm setting a, a goalpost now for, you know, the likes of my kids and other kids to be, you know, to see where I come from and if they can achieve that, like, world champion and two-weight world champion, out of a hundred, if you get one to do that, I'm over the moon. So um, I think it's a good example. It's about time I set a good example for kids for the right reasons instead of the wrongs. And uh, it's 2019 and, you know, that's got to happen. So good's got to come as well as in the ring also out, so, um, yeah. Well, if you're going to see Tyson in June, might you go through New York the previous Saturday and call out for Lofton? You know, I've, listen, I, I've had a sick of call. I am a super middleweight world champion now. I know that um, they're probably looking to prime Glofkin and Canelo up for, for a trilogy, third fight, but, you know, any one of them want it, call Frank and uh, we can get it on. No problem whatsoever. I'll be willing to fight any one of them next. You can't. Down the middle way for Golovkin. One hundred percent. You know, let's see if he wants to become a two weight world champion. I'll give him a shot. I'll give him the first shot if he wants it. The thing about it is, what really I find frustrating. We, they, not our contracts. They sent their contracts, which were duly signed by us all, and sent back to them. And they never, they never sent, they never signed and then sent the contracts back. So, no one can say he's ducked anybody. He signed on the dotted line twice. We're very ready to see your machine system build, don't we? Very often, got caught a bit in the sick, you come out of nowhere with it. 
how did that feel? Yeah, I think, listen, you can't walk in the rain without getting wet. And um, like I say, sometimes in that ring, when you just take your off the ball for one second, careless, you know, when you get careless, you know, any shot, any shot come at you, you can, people can get clipped. Um, I feel that it's, it's one of them that, you know, moving up to the new way, you know, testing the water. And to be honest with you, for the first three or four rounds or five rounds, and I wouldn't say I was getting bored, but I was just doing what I wanted to do. He was just playing eat the jab, couldn't miss him. And uh, just got a little bit careless. Look, he didn't, I got hit. I didn't get hit and hurt. I, when I got hit back, I went on my back foot and I was telling Ben I felt a little bit of cramp as well, but he caught me with a good shot. He caught me with a good shot as well at the same time. So uh, you have to go through these experiences at this level, then you know, making the mistake in a Glofkin or Canelo fight. This is all learning. You never stop learning when that bell goes. You always got you know, 36 minutes and I've, I've took away a lot from that fight and uh, I'll put that right for my next one. You know, next time, please God, you won't see me get with them silly shots, them daft shots, because I feel I took a couple tonight. I think I took three or four and there was some called for. I never normally do that, but you know, you get a little bit complacent, a little bit lazy, and that's what happens in boxing. You get it. So, um, yeah, hopefully I won't get it like that next time. I would bear in mind, which I know all the way through, is we only actually had nine weeks going into that, you know, and it's not that long of a training camp. Um, it was a good performance, and, and Billy Joe was, he felt very, very strong going in there, and, you know, through sparring and, and all through his training. And I knew, I could see that he was hurting the Sufi. But that's not Billy Joe's style. It's not to, to, to plant his feet and, and let big shots go. And he just got a little bit greedy, which is something that, that we spoke about. But listen, like Billy Joe said, it's a learning experience. He knows to stick to his boxing skills. If, if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And when he sticks to his boxing, I said to a Sufi after, I said, do not be disheartened in that because he will do that to anybody. He will do that to anybody. But a little bit of greed and it's a lesson learned. But good performance. Any more questions? Or are we done? So what are you afraid?